Okay, let's talk about iterables here. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that you've seen something like this. So if I were to say import random and then create a random list of values by saying random.randint between 1 and 10 and do that 10 times. Need to include the in operator 10 times. And then I could say something like for value in values print each value. All right, if I run this, I'm going to get those 10 values. But what I've done here is I've iterated over this list. And it actually turns out you can create your own custom iterables. So let's take a look at how to do that. And uh, the use case here will say that even though Python has um, a reverse function that will reverse a list, um, you have to call it explicitly each time. And maybe we want a list that is content that's always reversed. Okay. So I'll start off by creating class reversed list. And I'll add an initializer. And that initializer will take an optional list of initial values, which will be empty by default. And so then I'll need to assign an internal variable, an internal, um, an internal value to the class that will store those values. All right, now one way that I could iterate over something is to uh, call a function called next on it. And if I call this function called next on a per and pass it a particular iterable, then what it will do is it will look for a function called dunder next, which will return the next value in the iterable. And for right now, I'm just going to tell it to return self dot underscore values and we'll get the last one because we would want to start at the end for a reversed list and I'll go ahead and create a, an entry point here if name equals main then I'll create a reversed list and we'll create initial values of 1 2 and 3 and then what I'll do is I'll print next RL. And I'll do this a couple more times. Okay, if I run this, we're going to see three for each time because the, because the um, index for what we're returning is hard coded. So instead, what I would need to do is I would need to have a pointer to the current element in the, to the current index in the list. And so for that, what I can do is I can just do self say current and right now I'll make that the length of self dot values minus one and then I'll say current here I'll save dot values is that right no that's right that's right self dot values um, self dot current decrement self.current and then return current. All right. And if we run this, now we get 321, which is what we expect. However, let's take this a step further. We don't we don't we, we might not always know how many items are in the are in the reversed list. So maybe we want to go through all of them. So I could say something like while true. Now what's this gonna do? We're gonna get an index out of range error. So I could actually or an in or an index error rather. So what I could do here is I could catch I could catch that error. Or what I could do is I could have here in next, this is actually the more proper way to do it with an iterable, is say if self current is equal to zero to raise a stop iteration. Now, if I run this, we're going to get the stop iteration. 
but that's ex but that's actually expected, and that'll come in handy because that's actually what an iterable looks for. But to prevent it from being uncaught, what I'll do is I'll just say try, and then accept the stop iteration as e print no more items and then break out of the loop. And now if I run this, 3.2 actually, what happened here? I actually need to go, oh, I'm sorry, not if it equals zero, if it's less than zero. That should be less than zero, oops, not M, but less than zero. Okay, so let's run it again. There we go, 3.2.1, no more items. The problem is this code right here, that's a lot of code to write. What we really want to do is something like this. For value in RL print value. That's what we'd like to do. Now if I try to run this, it's going to tell me reverse list object is not iterable. Okay, so why is this? What this will do here is this will actually call a function iter, I-T-E-R, pass it the RL, the reverse list, and get back an object that is iterable that supports that or that implements dunder next. Now this implements dunder next, as we've seen here, but it does not implement another function called dunder iter, which will return the iterable when it is passed to iter. And all we need to do here is return self. The reason is because the iterable just has to support this function here. So if we so if we return self, it returns the current object which supports which implements under next. Okay? So now let's run this and see what happens. All right. This is interesting because we see that this code here it printed no more items than we would expect to see 3, 2, 1 again. Now the reason that doesn't work in this case is because we're setting current in the initializer and what we want to do is we want to have, we want to reset current with every new iterator. So now if I just cut this, put it here, um, everything should work. Reverse list has no current, what did I do? Oh, oh, I, okay, that, that's up here. So what's happening is, um, this code here is dependent upon the current position being set in the initializer, and now it's being set in the iterator. Actually, all I need to do is explicitly get an iterator here for RL, and then call that on next. Because the pointer to the current items in the iterator is created when we create the iterator. So now this, yeah, that works. So now I don't need this code anymore. We can just use save this. Um, and I think that's probably enough for this video. We'll take a look at some more Dunder methods and more stuff about iterables in other videos.